On the final day of last season, Mikel Arteta said something that every Arsenal fan wanted to hear. Don't be satisfied. We want much more and we are going to get it. So on his quest to further improve, today we'll find out if Eberitsi Eze is now on his radar. We'll also reveal the rumours behind a potential done deal, reveal a new agreement regarding Victor Osimhen, and break down all of the Arsenal drama from Euro 2024. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bass14, welcome back to your boy channel and I hope you guys are doing sensational and if you're watching from the UK, enjoying the very hot weather because you don't really normally get it. Regardless though, smash a like on the video if you enjoy and subscribe to the channel if you are new. As you guys are aware, we are less than 2,000 away from the big 200k, it's down to you to make it happen. But starting off with Arsenal's forward potential signing. In a season where Arsenal have just scored 91 goals, the record amount in the Premier League history, Mikel Arteta is still on the market for a brand new forward. Well, we often find ourselves talking about out wide, links to Nico Williams and wide forwards that have pace, but not the goal scoring pedigree of a top number 9. Go back to last year and in terms of touches in the opposition box, Arsenal were the highest in the league, with over 1,500, averaging 4.6 crosses per game, the 7th highest in the league. A natural goal scorer could thrive with those opportunities. So what about a striker that has just scored 30 goals in 30 games, 28 in the Bundesliga and is available for £20 million? We are talking about Serha Garassi of Stuttgart, who play goal confirmed has decided to leave Stuttgart and has informed the club of his decision. Borussia Dortmund have made it clear to him that he is their decided striker this summer, but fear also the most at this stage. At 28 years of age, this guy just had an explosive season. 28 Bundesliga goals and only 25 starts, all from an XG of 20.8 and a whopping 30% goal conversion. He's surprisingly graceful on the ball, smooth with finishing and fantastic at linking up play. Last year, he created a whopping 12 big chances. Even Christian Falk confirmed that Arsenal were in the race from the Bundesliga star. But the issue here was always going to be Borussia Dortmund. With Fabrizio saying they keep working the Grassi deal and confidence to make it happen soon, as they remain the front runners assigned the player by triggering a 17.5 million euro release clause. But unfortunately, there was a catch. The clause is actually lower for Bundesliga clubs than it is for the Premier League, leaving Dortmund as the massive favourites. Fabrizio Romano then provided a dagger. So he aggressive to Borussia Dortmund, here we go as Dortmund have received the green up from the player side after working on the deal for months. But for me, it's the fact that Arsenal had interest in the first place. For a player that was another market opportunity, a release clause available to make the deal happen, similar to the case of Benjamin Szczesko. That's what brings us to our next target, a player that has just spanned in 43 goals and has a gargantuan release clause. According to reports in Portugal, Arsenal are about to secure the signing of Sporting Lisbon striker Victor Jokeres for below his 100 million euro release clause. The clubs have agreed on a fixed amount of 90 million euros, which may restore 120 after add-ons. 43 goals, 50 in assists, you can see why Arsenal would want the player, but the report itself is definitely going over the top. It claims that George Mendes is acting as the intermediary to bring Jokeres to Arsenal with the deal according to sources close to being completed after negotiations advanced rapidly in recent days. As much as I don't buy the report, there's no denying that Arsenal definitely have interest. Confirmed by Mr. Here We Go Fabrizio Romano himself, saying Arsenal were informed on the Victor Yoko situation, but at the moment they still haven't decided what they really want to do in that position, and who their priority target is. The thing with Yoko is, is the fact that release clause is there, and I don't think Arsenal are going to pay anywhere near that. If any deal is going to happen, it has to be below that. Which brings us to our next target in Victor Osimhen. A striker with a reported release clause of 110 million euros. According to reports in Italy, Napoli are now lowering the demands for Victor Osimhen from his initial release clause. They would be willing to listen to offers around 85 million pounds. Which makes a lot of sense why when you think about it. Napoli are a club in transition. They have just appointed Antonio Conte, finishing 10th last year in the Serie A, miles off European football. Conte reportedly wants to sign Romelu Lukaku because he realises that Osimhen definitely wants to leave. A striker that needs Champions League football, scoring 15 times in 25 starts last season. He's a profile that my friends of the Canon podcast are a massive fan of, especially my guy George. Often saying that if we like Havertz up front, then Arsenal fans will love Victor Osimhen, a defender's nightmare because he has pace and power, alongside a natural desire to go and score goals. Antonio Conte has given us a massive update, who says on Osimhen, I'm aware of the situation. I know there is an agreement with the club, so it's a different case compared to the others. There is a pact between Victor and Napoli on his future, and I've accepted that. Is that club going to be Arsenal? We're going to have to wait and see. Because as things stand, they're closing into signing a brand new goalkeeper. The breaking news comes from Gerard Romero. Juan Garcia of Espanyol is the future goalkeeper for Arsenal, just as he was announced to be a part of the Spain Olympic squad. After a thorough session of youth scouting alongside the power of Google, it does make sense why Arsenal would want the player. 23 years of age, fairly young for a goalkeeper. Having just had his breakthrough year in La Liga 2, he only started a total of 14 games, taking the place in the second half of the season. He kept a whopping 8 clean sheets in the 14 games, with an insane 83% save percentage. 
Six foot three tall, the same height as Aaron Ramsdale. Main part of the deal is a £21 million release clause. With Aaron Ramsdale most certainly leaving, there's a space for a new keeper at Arsenal. But the most important stat comes down to crossing. With Garcia stopping 16% of his crosses last season, putting him in the top 1% in the world, it's very similar to David Raya, showing that Arsenal won a keeper that can replicate, coming to the side without an ounce of a drop off. Moving on to Nico Williams, a wide forward that has burst onto the scene in Euro 2024, thriving for Spain with impressive runs to the left hand side. It seems like Arsenal have been very impressed, with the Athletic confirming that Arsenal made Nico Williams their main transfer targets if they decide to move for a winger this summer. We've talked about his profile, we've talked about his strengths, and the more important his release clause. Standing at 58 million euros, we have to talk about the one catch. Having signed a brand new contract only last season, which alongside his release clause puts wages up to 200,000 euros a week. That's why it makes sense to hear from Team Usman Ticks. It's true that Arsenal are looking at Nico Williams, but nothing will be decided until after the Euros. The player's wage demands may be a putter for Arsenal. Whenever a player moves, he always gets a wage increase. So that means if Arsenal were to sign Williams, he would demand more than likes of William Saliba and Gabriel Martinelli. Talking of also Brazilian star boys currently at Copa America 2024, coming off of Brazil in their first game off the bench in a nil nil draw. In a recent interview, he gave a quote that I think you guys need to hear. I transferred to Arsenal with the certainty that if I continue to be myself, true to my essence, focused and serene, no amount of pressure would stop me from finding a whole garden of flowers in North London. It's been quite a journey. The team becomes more consistent every season and I am sure that we will give our fans a Premier League title and a Champions League too. The self-belief in the interview of a player that arrived at Arsenal at 18 years of age, knowing that he was going to break into the first team even back then, it gives me confidence going into the future. He may have scored only 6 goals last season, but having showed the year before 15 what he can do, if Mikel Arteta can fix the left hand side, find him a consistent midfield partner, a left back that can overlap, a resurgence is almost certain. What Arsenal need actually is what they used to have. I'm talking about Granit Xhaka. He was up against Kai Havertz in their recent game in Euro 2024, as Germany drew Switzerland 1 goal to 1 with a former Arsenal player winning the official man of the match. There may be an Emirates return come August the 7th, as Bayer Leverkusen have confirmed that they will take on Arsenal in the Emirates Cup, where we will also face Lyon on August the 11th, up against former players Andy Metternals and Alexandre Lacazette. But let's forget the past and focus on the present, as David Raya got his first off of Spain in Euro 2024, helping Spain beat Albania one goal to nil and keeping a clean sheet. Raya had an impressive 8.0 rating with 4 saves made, a 0.84 goals prevented, alongside completing 84% of his passes and 5 long balls. That is now 21 clean sheets in his last 42 competitive matches he's played this season, at an outstanding 50%. And the funniest thing is, is technically he's still on loan, a Brentford player after June the 30th, but Fabrizio Romano confirms, Arsenal are expected to proceed with formal steps to activate the £27 million buy clause in Riot's contract in the next few days. You also have William Saliba starting again for France as they drew Poland 1 goal to 1, in a game Saliba won possession 5 times in the first half alongside three clearances more than any other player on the pitch. It was so good that after the game Saliba had to be checked, with the keep confirming the France team bus left Dortmund without Saliba, as the Arsenal defender was designated for the post-match anti-doping control. The testing took way longer than expected. What about Alexander Zinchenko though? Starting for Ukraine in a nil-nil draw against Belgium, it all means despite getting full points from the group, the same amount as top place Romania, with a minus two goal difference Ukraine have been knocked out. But that's not the nil-nil draw that I have to focus on. Unfortunately, we have to talk about England. Involved in a 0 0 against Slovenia, an absolute ball fest as England only created a 0.65 XG. Fans are now questioning how can they fix their attack, it's so boring, what does Southgate need to do? That's where we have this controversial quote from Ian Wright. Saying after the game with how naturally left sided Saka is, can we put Saka at left back and Palmer on the right hand side instead? Which on paper to him may make sense because Saka has played left back before. But then you look at the context of the England squad. Not only is Saka our second highest goal scorer, but behind Harry Kane is our most experienced forward in tournament football. The only player actually offering England an outlet, a majority of attacks going down his side. Why would you drop that when you've got Gordon on the left hand side, a natural left winger instead of Foden, who can provide the balance instead? Regardless, the group stage is now over and the round of 16 is now here, with the Arsenal boys involved for Spain, Germany, England, France, Belgium and of course Italy, who themselves made it through in dramatic scenes. A 98th minute equalised the draw against Croatia, a game in which Jorginho started but the real focus was on someone else. Italy's star left centre back Riccardo Cagliari, with a 7.5 rating, 73 touches, 61 accurate passes and 3 key passes, one big chance created and an assist as a centre back, seeing him excel this tournament driving out of the back. Such a unique profile of a ball carrying centre back. The exciting news comes from Matteo Moretta. In the last few hours Arsenal have investigated the profile of Riccardo Cagliari, 
but so far Juve is a team that have moved further ahead of his competition, with even Fabrizio Romano having his say. Confirming that Arsenal are one of the teams showing interest in the Bologna defender, however at the moment it is not a negotiation. 22 years of age, a star in Euro 2024, having just come off his break for year Bologna, I would be concerned if Arsenal didn't have interest, especially because of the potential. Despite playing in a back three last year for Bologna, when you see how comfortable he is in possession, the fact that he's completed 100% of his dribbles in Euro 24, could he be our left back solution? Because even looking at his last game of last season, the fact that he dropped a 9.1 rank from centre back with two goals scored, six out of eight ground duels, and 100% of his passes completed. Watching him play, I see a Mikel Arteta defender, a versatile centre back that's comfortable on the ball, also able to play out wide, a similar profile to Jurgen Timber and Ben White. But talking of transfers, there is another player that Arsenal fans are getting excited about. A midfield maverick that plays for Crystal Palace, we of course are talking Eberit Sayese. According to the reliable Alex Goldberg, everyone at Arsenal loves Eberit Sayese and they view him as someone who can play left wing and left central midfielder. However, as Palace want £50 million of the £60 million release clause paid up front, it remains to be seen whether Arsenal pursue him at that price. With even team using Tick Say, Arsenal's interest in Eze is real. It is certainly not just agent talk. Your boy has manifested this because I've talked about it time and time again. A £60 million release clause for a player of his profile. Premier League experience with 11 goals last year, the storyline of a former Arsenal player that came through our academy, the returning son of Hewen. As Team News and Tick says, I've been told by two unconnected people that Arsenal are looking at Eberit Eze. I know loads of people at the club like him. Eze has a very affordable raise clause around £60 million. Eze is a player that I think could thrive in the Champions League, a competition all about individual brilliance. This guy completed 2.6 dribbles per game last season, the second highest in the league only behind Doku and Kudus. A potential upgrade on the Millsmith throw and a player that's always said, my dream was to play for Arsenal. Another midfielder that we need to keep an eye on though is Bruno Guimaraes. Heavily linked to a move to Man City, Fabrizio Romano now confirms, Bruno Guimaraes' release clause worth £100 million of his contract has officially expired. Moving on to the other Arsenal news today, starting off with some official confirmed news. With a club statement last year confirming that Arsenal released 22 players, on that list you had a certain Carl Hine. 22 years of age, a full Estonian international with over 30 caps. Arsenal have now confirmed that we are delighted to announce that Karl Heine signed a new contract with the club. He will not be a starter anytime soon and if Arsenal do sign a brand new goalkeeper, he may have to be number three. But for a player that has so much international experience, showing Arsenal fans in the past he excels at penalties, saving four against AC Milan, if anything Arsenal are preserving his value. Knowing that teams might have interest, we will now be able to demand good money. But talking of goalkeepers, one keeper that isn't staying is Arthur Okonkwa. Released from the club last month, he has now confirmed his departure, saying Arsenal will always be special to me and I hope to see him successful in the coming years. He joined the club in 2009, 8 years of age, leading off the 15 years. Last year, he was on fire, starting 35 games for Wrexham as they were promoted to League One. He's not the only player leaving Arsenal's academy. As a Fabrizio Romano dagger confirms, Armi Okuzi Dubri is set to leave Arsenal as a free agent as well at the end of June. Arsenal had offered Armi a new deal, but he decided it wasn't the best option for his development. Often compared to Bukayo Saka, almost seen as a regen. It is a shame to see him go, but it makes a lot of sense why. Because as the Athletic confirmed, the key reason for him turning down his offer was a lack of a clear pathway to the first team. When you've got a player like Bukayo Saka in front of you, who's already a superstar and is always available, alongside the realisation that Arsenal are no longer in 2020, we've got a strong team fighting for a title, players that are set in Mikate as ways. That's where integrating youth players is always difficult. While United and Chelsea can do it because they're fighting 8th and 7th, Arsenal are focused on becoming elite. My concern is something different. It's the fact that we're letting him go for free. A young player that had so much potential, one to the clubs across the Premier League. This is where Arsenal need to learn from City and Chelsea, signing all of the young players to contracts. Even if they don't make it into the first team, they're always able to make a profit. That is the video there and there though, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you have, don't forget to smash a like and also subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to follow your boy in all of his social medias, then the links are down below in the description. But that was the latest episode of the Transfers FC and as we approach the knockout stages of Euro 2024, I expect the transfers might be getting a little bit more interesting. So stay tuned as always and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks.